Next up, we explore how you can be creative using commands and strategies in some new ways. We're going to build a vent or flexible ducting like you might see behind a dryer. Hopefully, there are no ducts behind your driver, but I will not judge you. So we're going to build this duct actually two different ways and then kind of compare the advantages and disadvantages of each. Let's start off by maximizing the front viewport. I'm going to double click. I do want to turn on my grid snap. I'm going to use the grid to make some quick drawing. And I'm going to do the profile of this duct with the polyline. So we'll zoom in here a little bit. And then I'm just going to bounce around from alternating square to opposite square. So you can kind of see where I'm after here. We're going to have this outside profile. And the red line you're seeing, that's going to be the center line for the revolve. OK, with that line drawn, let's uh, double click the front view. We'll go back to perspective, which I really appreciate here because it makes everything so much easier to see. So there's the profile we drew. Now, before we revolve this, we probably want to make this a little bit rounded, put some fillets on there. Let's explore that command under curve, fillet curves. That would work, but we have to do each of those corners one at a time. So let's use the more advanced corner command. This lets us select the polycurve right now. Select, right click. I'm going to type in a radius of five, and then boom, we've got rounded corners everywhere, every single edge it found. Okay, so we're ready for the revolve. That's under Surface, Revolve, select the curve, right click to accept. I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit. We need to define the axis, that's the red line. So I'm just gonna pick a point here towards the origin and then maybe the end point, make sure your snaps are already set. Now revolves are pretty cool, it lets you go anywhere between zero and 360 degrees, which is nice, but most of the time you're pretty much gonna go full circle. So just pick that from the command line. Let's switch over to shaded view. There's our duct, looks pretty good. However, I do wanna have this bend one side. So let's go to another viewport one more time. I'm gonna switch over here to the front viewport and we're gonna use a command under transform called appropriately enough, bend. Now following the command line options it says select the object. That'll be the duct we just made, not the curves. Right click to accept. Then it's asking us to define a spine, and that's actually the thing we bend, and the pipe will go along with it. So I'm going to go back to that origin, make sure I snap right there. Now you can also bend part of a section by stopping in the middle or anywhere else. I'm going to come up to the top and just click up here, holding down Shift. I've also noticed I have my grid snap still on. I'm going to turn that off. And then you can change any angle you want. Here I'm in the front viewport. So let's just stop at somewhere about 90 degree bend. Now it does take a little while to generate and you'll see what happens here in a second. Back in my perspective viewport, you can see this got really detailed and complicated. So that's something we should talk about right now. This is very simple to do. I did a revolve and a bend, but this is so complicated. It might not be worth further edits. We can clean it up a little bit by just turning off those isocurves. Those are on the properties, and we scroll down to isocurve density, just turn them off. So it does look a lot cleaner, but since we know it's very complicated, I'm probably not gonna do much more with this. Instead, let's try a better method here. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna switch over to uh, design two and turn off the layer we were on. Let's make sure all the layers are on there. Okay, I'm going to do most of my work here in perspective as usual, just so I can kind of see what's happening. Here we have a path curve already drawn, and that is really important. As you saw in the example before, I did a quick bend, and now it's just a single bend to the right. This, we're bending in both directions and kind of doubling back. So this second method will give you much more control. However, it's a little more tricky, and we have to do some trial and error here, which you'll see in just a second. Let's start off by putting some profiles on this curve. I'm going to use the standard circle. However, there's a really cool option you might not have noticed here. It's called a round curve. So let's see what happens there. I'm gonna pick the curve for it to go onto, and then I can select anywhere along its length. I'm gonna snap here at the end. I do wanna make this a specific size. You can always eyeball it just by dragging and clicking. However, I'm gonna type in a specific number of 40, 40. 
And now you should notice that is perfectly perpendicular to the end of that line. That's really important for a lot of things you may want to make. So use that option whenever you're making a shape of around a curve. We do need to draw a second one. Let's draw that. We select a round curve again. I'm going to pick this path curve. I'm going to come up just a little ways, just kind of eyeball it. It's not too important. And you'll notice we come back off perpendicular. I'm going to type a value of 30 in there. So now what I've created is a set of large radius, small radius, and we just need to repeat those along the length. And that's really the tricky part I was talking about. Let's go to the command, transform array along a curve. The objects are the two circles, so click both and then right click to accept. The path curve is the one already there. Now, I'm just gonna take a wild guess here. Maybe I wanna put maybe about 20, 20 copies of those two, and then let's just see what happens. It actually looks like I got really lucky. They're all equally spaced, and you can verify that by going into a straight section here. So the distance between the pair and the next group should be about equal. And you can also, of course, do the, all the math required if you want to be really, really specific. I tend to just kind of guess and try it a couple times. So that's all we need. Let's go ahead and draw a box around all the stuff here. I did get the path curve, which I don't want. So we can deselect by holding down Control, selecting that path curve one more time, and it removes it from the set. We can now go to surface, and the command I'm using is loft. Now it asks us to make sure the seams are aligned, so make sure yours are all pointing the same direction and are in the same general location there at the bottom of each of those curves. If not, you have to move them around, get them in agreement. Mine are okay, so I'm just gonna right click to accept. Right now we're in preview mode, and so that is a really smooth, elegant loft. However, you may wanna decide I want to have something a little more mechanical, so feel free to explore some of these options. The more mechanical one I would recommend is straight sections. I will click preview to take a peek at that. So that's way more metallic and mechanical looking. We wanted this to be more fabric style. So let's go to normal. Let's preview again to make sure, and then okay to accept all the other options. This process was originally a challenge from one of my design students. And I will admit, it did take a fair amount of trial and error to come up with this really cool solution. But this is a great example of treating your design like a puzzle. Just pretend you're a 3D detective and solve the mystery.